Good afternoon. I'm reviewing some basic physiology today and we'll uh, describe how that influences uh, our access to the abdomen during pregnancy. No disclosures. So there are a few physiologic changes that we have to be aware of as surgeons. Um, the blood volume does increase in pregnancy. Uh, women are hypercoagulable. Uh, there's compression, most importantly, of the inferior vena cava by the gravid uterus. Uh, there are some changes in the lungs, uh, which are affected by our pneumoperitoneum. Uh, but to reemphasize, uh, it's the compression of the cava that uh, we have to be uh, very much aware of. Uh, as we know, the height of the fundus increases uh, as a pregnancy progresses. At about 20 weeks, it's palpable at the umbilicus and then progresses uh, thereafter uh, up to near the costal margin. As I mentioned, this is a schematic of compression of the inferior vena cava when the patient is uh, lying supine uh, as, a, as on the operating table. And this is ameliorated by placing the patient in the decubitus position and relieving the pressure uh, from the inferior vena cava. Uh, so it'd be nice uh, if there were um, some randomized trials to, to tell us how to access the abdomen, but there have been no such thing. So uh, we rely on a few retrospective reviews and the uh, SAGE's guideline, which is a systematic review. Uh, in many sources, we've uh, shown that laparoscopy is safe during pregnancy uh, in any trimester of pregnancy if for uh, the proper indications. Uh, so we'll move on to port placement in pregnancy. Uh, there are uh, different techniques that are available. Uh, most people <clears throat> will advocate the subcostal open approach. Some people just uh, also use a varus needle. There are some who will use uh, a peri-umbilical or supra-umbilical approach. My preference is to use uh, the, the subcostal approach, especially as pregnancy progresses. This just takes one variable out, and it's uh, a pretty safe procedure if you're comfortable with it. Uh, so again, we rely on the SAGE's guidelines. Many of the auth authors are up here today, and they'll talk about their portions of the guideline. Uh, so in guideline 11, it talks about uh, port placement in particular. It should be adjusted uh, depending on the fundal height. Uh, as uh, pregnancy progresses into the second or third trimester, it's nice to use the subcostal approach. But the varus approach is also recognized as a safe procedure. Uh, there are some groups who will use ultrasound to, in, uh, to uh, delineate where the fundus is so as to avoid it during access to the abdomen. Uh, we'll get on to pneumoperitoneum and uh, the proper pressure to use. Uh, we know that as a gravid uterus uh, progresses, it displaces the diaphragm and leads to decreases in the lung volume and the FRC, which can be exacerbated when we inflate the abdomen with the pneumoperitoneum. It's been shown to be safe to use pressures of 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury. It's probably better if you can use a lower pressure so long as you have adequate visualization. Uh, there have been some reports of gasless laparoscopy, which uses this contraption with uh, a hoist of the anterior abdominal wall. I don't have much um, familiarity with it. So I have a few take-home points. It's important to alter the positioning of the patient uh, when operating during pregnancy, relieve the pressure from the inferior vena cava. It's not always uh, appropriate to go into the full decubitus position, but bumping up the right side of the abdomen to relieve the pressure is important. I prefer the subcostal access to the abdomen. I think it's the safest way uh, to avoid injury to the uterus. And I try to lower the uh, pressure of the pneumoperitoneum down to 10 or 12 millimeters of mercury so, to, so as to avoid uh, uh, impairing the perfusion to the uterus. Thank you very much.